Hey guys, Jeff with Bennington Elkhorn Valley Railroad here. Um, so I'm talking about uh, power for uh, for lights and accessories. The, the turntable of my roundhouse, uh, my little DC powered light rail line. Um, one thing I've read, I've seen on uh, on YouTube. It's all over, quite frankly. I'm probably the only one doesn't know about it. Again, I'm probably a lot of these things I share are things that that I've found. This is what I'm doing. Um, I've got, being a computer guy, I've got tons of these old PC desktops. And what a lot of people are doing is they're using the power supplies from these old PCs to power their layout. Um, so I, uh, I ripped one out of, uh, I ripped one out of, uh, out of my, uh, this, that desktop you just saw there. And, uh, what I've come to realize is, uh, again, there's lots of YouTube videos on it, but uh, um, in, in looking at some of those guys, I've come to realize that uh, there is uh, it's obviously DC power, and uh, um, there's a number of different, uh, um, the different uh, wires coming off of it. Uh, there's 12 volt, there's 5 volt, there's also 3 volt that are coming out of these, out of these things. So the idea is, is to kind of pare it down to just exactly what you need. Uh, this particular one doesn't have a switch, so I'd have to wire in a switch. Um, and what I learned is looking at this particular connector, which is the one that goes to your, uh, to your motherboard. Um, if you count over, looking at the top clip here, if you count over one, two, three, the number three and the number four on top, if you short these two guys, you connect the switch on there, that actually turns on the power to this guy when it's plugged in. So you can create then a switch uh, using the, the three and four wires here. Um, so what I did is I just uh, just cut them off and, um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll put a switch on there. So I guess what I'm going to do here is just kind of show, again, probably a rehash of a lot of other videos are. Maybe I'll share even some links to some of the ones that I found that are probably more useful than mine. But I'm just going to share my experience with uh, converting one of these uh, these power supplies over to use for accessories. Um, if you know <clears throat> where I'm going, so yeah, one of the outputs is three volts. Um, all these little uh, all these little LEDs, um, like these tiny little guys that you get, uh, are mostly they tend to be three volts. Um, and what a lot of people are doing, running off of a standard 12 volt transformer, is they're uh, they're putting resistors in here to let them run off of 12 volts. Well, that gets really old. And, and uh, what's cool then about the power supply is you've got a dedicated 3 volt line, 3.3 volt to be exact, coming off of one of these things. So then we can actually, you know, run up almost like a bus wire for all your 3 volt powered accessories. And uh, and then we can actually. Uh, um, not have to worry about resistors and whatnot. Um, in addition, we can use a dedicated 12 volt wire to run off uh, some dedicated DC accessories. Obviously, I can't run off a DCC bus, um, so running off the 12 volt wire off of the power supply, um, I can do things like run my uh, my turntable at the roundhouse, or uh, like I said, uh, the light rail line. I, I believe um, that that unit actually is a DC powered unit. So. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of walk through that. So yeah, here's what I did. I literally just cut off, cut all the, you know, the SATA device, hard drives and disk drives, all the adapters for those old interface uh, SATA drives. I cut all those wires off. Um, the, uh, the, the one that goes to the motherboard, I'm actually going to lock it completely off at the power supply. I think I'm going to use like a, seeing this done on YouTube seems pretty safe. I'm going to use a glue gun to basically completely cover up the, the ends of those and I'm going to leave it sealed inside of the, inside of the power supply here. So that pretty much just leaves all the wires that were supplying those SATA devices here, which will be more than enough power that I'll run to my, uh, my terminal block, which I misplaced here. So I'll run to one of these. Uh, Little thermal blocks here. So I'm going to cut through all 
other guys here, the boys. Oh, So just as I saw in a couple of YouTube videos, I just lopped off all the wires from the connector that goes to the motherboard, and I'm going to top those off with uh, a glue gun. And there is what the wire bundle that went to the uh, motherboard looks like, covered with uh, glue from a glue gun. And it is running. Checking to make sure there's nothing shorting out here. All oh, looks good. And again, here's all the wires left over from uh, that went to the solder devices, which will ultimately go to my uh, terminal block. You can see you now I've got uh, a black going here, which is a negative going to my terminal block. I've got an orange, which should be the 3.3 volt, and I've got a yellow, which is a 12 volt. Um, that's, actually, I was kind of at this point, I guess I realized there's only one orange. I'm kind of colorblind, so initially I thought the yellows were the oranges. Um, there's only one orange, but I think that should be good. Um, come out of this power supply. There's a whole bunch of reds, which are 5 volts. Honestly, I don't know if, uh, if I'm going to have a need for 5 volts, so I'll probably end up capping those off. But so yeah, I've got a 12 volt and a 3.3 volt. So let's grab our leads here and see what they say. So we'll connect negative here and we'll connect the yellow. And this is actually on the, uh, the 10 volt scale. You can see it goes beyond the 10. It's reading about 12, so I think we're I think we're getting 12 out of there. It went beyond the 12, and the, it went beyond the 10 and the 10 scale. So I think we got 12 volts coming out of there. Yeah, it's 12 volts. Now we connect to the orange, and we are reading a little over 3 volts. So it looks like we got exactly what we're looking for here. So here I've got one of these. Uh, cheap Chinese LEDs. Um, I can't tell you how many of these are burned out trying to figure out resistors for these. Um, eventually did, but it's kind of a pain to add a resistor to every one of these little lights. So the whole idea of having a 3 volt circuit off of an old computer power supply like this is really appealing. So anyway, I went ahead and moved the negative over right next to the 3 volt one so I didn't have to run a wire to this thing because I'm kind of lazy at the moment. Just want to get instant gratification, see if it works. So let's just try hooking this guy on here. And look at that. And let's see if the, this is actually a color rotating one. If it had too much voltage, the thing would be popping out here. But it's not. It's, uh, it's cycling through each of its colors. Isn't that pretty? I'm not sure what the application would be on a model railroad, but <laughs> it works for testing our circuit here. So, there you go. Three volts directly to the uh, LEDs. We'll be able to run this under the layout and uh, run some lighting off of it. Oops, there's my flash. Isn't that cool? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Here's the real acid test here. I actually burnt one of these out trying to get it to work. And they're not real cheap, quite like the... Uh, the cheap Chinese LEDs. These are, well, Chinese too, no doubt, but these are these little street lights, which are really tiny LEDs. And uh, there it is on the 3.3 volts. Looks, uh, looks good. So, lighting on the Baytown Valley Railroad coming soon.